Hi. Uh, uh, well, let me get started. Uh, my name is Catherine, and I'm a PyCharm developer. And how many of you know about PyCharm? Oh, great. <laughs> uh, well, this talk is not about PyCharm at all, so if you are interested in PyCharm, please visit our booth. We'll be really happy to see you there. And what I'm going to be talking about is uh, vectorizing your brain with uh, NumPy. And this is actually a lecture taken from my graduate machine learning course. I'm currently teaching in, uh, at an academic university in St. Petersburg. And uh, how many of you are using NumPy? I mean, how many of you are using NumPy in your everyday development? Well, I'm sorry, guys. I believe I'll know, uh, I will not tell you anything new today. And as I already mentioned, uh, this talk is taken from my machine learning course. And you might wonder uh, why this talk uh, was included in such course in the first place. And the simplest answer is here. I started my course with a simple algorithm one can, can imagine, and it's k nearest neighbors. And this algorithm, you're probably familiar with it, uh, it's used in classification tasks. And the idea is to assign uh, the label which is most frequent uh, among uh, k nearest uh, neighbors to the object. And uh, assignment for this lecture was to this algorithm and uh, apply it to Wines data set. And that was actually an uh, average code I got in reply to this assignment. And uh, no one of my students actually used NumPy. And uh, well, it was sad. And uh, this code uh, worked hours. I mean, I can just wait for so long time to uh, check the assignment. So my teaching assistant and me uh, decided to uh, include introduction uh, uh, kind of NumPy lecture in the course. And uh, well, that is my motivation to speak about NumPy and have this knowledge. And NumPy is the main tool used in all the science. And uh, what I want to do today is uh, talk about how to use NumPy efficiently and uh, how to use it for data-centric computing. And it's uh, relatively easy, but you have to think about uh, in some different ways to, about your code uh, writing NumPy uh, to, in order to use it efficiently. So I'm going to go through some ideas uh, that may be helpful. Well, unfortunately, when I was preparing this talk, I found that I didn't have enough time to make proper introduction to IPython. Uh, so I'll assume for now that you're all familiar with it. Uh, and, uh, but I will explain some features uh, used in this talk uh, during the talk. Well, let's get back to uh, Python and uh, let's talk about Python performance. Uh, the first thing a uh, person learns about Python is that Python is fast. And it's fast for developing and uh, trying things out. But unfortunately, the second thing uh, you know, uh, learn about Python is that Python is slow. And uh, everybody knows that Python is slow. But do you know why? Well, any of you? Uh, so let's write a simple function to calculate Euclidean distance. And this is actually also taken from uh, this first assignment. We need this Euclidean distance uh, to calculate uh, nearest neighbors. And on the first row, we got number of iterations needed. And then we just accumulate uh, the distance or oh, the difference between two points and uh, then return uh, this accumulated sum. Nothing special. And I'm going to be using time it magic uh, function included in IPython and IPython notebook. And it allows you to measure your runtime. 
and uh, to quickly get benchmarks for uh, the simple uh, functions like this. And time, uh, time it function will run it, uh, run your code a couple of times to make sure it has the best result. And we, if we use time it and we call our Euclidean distance function, we find that uh, it executes in 2.67 uh, milliseconds per loop. And uh, you might wonder, is it fast or is it slow? Well, let's look on something in comparison. And the best way to compare this is to compare this to compiled language time. So if we instead implement this uh, exact function in C, and I used here by T magic extension from my Python to load C code directly into Python so we can uh, use the same uh, time it functionality. Well, it's pretty awesome, and uh, if you haven't checked IPython yet, please uh, do it. And uh, if we time this uh, C function, we find that it com completes in 28 microseconds per loop. So we see that uh, C code is uh, 100 times faster than Python. So I'm sorry, it's true, Python is slow for this kind of tasks. And what is the problem with this Python code? Uh, nothing special, nothing uh, difficult uh, is done here. We're just going through the array and uh, doing some simple addition and multiplication. Uh, so let's do the next step. And uh, we want to find a bottleneck. So uh, we want to learn uh, what part of our code is so slow. And I'll use Line Profiler installed on my computer. And uh, Line Profiler has this nice LP run magic comment. And LP run shows us how many times uh, time you spent on each line of code. And uh, do you see anything strange here? Well, it uh, might be kind of tricky if you haven't seen uh, LP run output before. Uh, but the strange thing here is uh, that we spend 38% of our time on uh, fifth line, on looping. So the question is why? And uh, to answer this question, we have to go back to and see uh, differences between languages. And uh, C, Java, and uh, other languages are compiled uh, uh, and statically typed languages. So you write the code, you have a compiler uh, that runs through your code and uh, uh, decides how it's going to be executed. And uh, the downside of it is uh, that uh, compiler needs to know uh, variable types uh, at a compiler time. That means you have to specify types yourself. Uh, well, actually, I really love C, and it was my first language. But it's far more cumbersome. Uh, you have to write all this extra stuff. I mean, uh, you have to remember to declare real, uh, variables and uh, uh, cetera. And Python or Octave, uh, on the other hand, uh, are interpreted languages. So they don't compile down to the fast machine code, which means it uh, executes a little bit slower, but there are advantages as well. And we all know that Python has uh, this dynamic type system, uh, which makes programming so easy. And uh, you don't have to specify types yourself. You don't have to write type annotations. And my colleague Andrew is going to be talking about Python 3 annotations and uh, when it becomes useful. Uh, uh, so please visit his talk tomorrow. I believe it's going to be interesting. And so back to dynamic uh, nature of Python. Um, each time you do a Python uh, operation, there, uh, there is a, a little bit of overhead for things like uh, type checking, and when I do A plus B in Python, uh, interpreter has to check type of A and then check type of B, 
and then find a proper code to execute and uh, then return the result. And there is also reference counting. Interpreter has to augment the reference counter and then decrease reference counter as you change the values of your variables. And well, we like Python because it's, even though it's uh, somewhat slow, but it's uh, very quick to develop to write the code. And well, that's why I use Python. So the question is, uh, what, we, uh, what do we do with this slowness? And uh, that's where NumPy comes in. NumPy is basically designed to help us get the best from both worlds. Um, we want to have fast uh, execution time uh, from languages like C. And we want a fast uh, development type uh, from Python. So I'm gonna talk today uh, here uh, is some ideas to make Python faster when you are working with the numerical data. And the first idea I'm going to talk about is UFUNX, uh, and it's the simplest opportunity. Uh, UFUNX is the short name for a universal function. Uh, this is basically a special type of uh, functions uh, defined within a NumPy uh, library, and it operates it element-wise on an array. And uh, the idea behind the UFUNX uh, is to combine the functionality and the loop uh, together, well, in one. So uh, let me show an example of this. If you're a Python programmer uh, who doesn't use NumPy and uh, you wanna do element-wise operation on your array, uh, this is probably the best way you do it. And uh, so, we have an array of uh, int uh, values and we want to add one to each of these values. And as a good Python programmer, you probably use uh, list comprehensions. So you do uh, for uh, value plus one for value in A and uh, print out the result. So this is Pythonic way to do it. NumPy way to do this is to, which is a bit simpler, uh, is to create NumPy array with uh, special uh, creation functions. And uh, here we don't add, add uh, one to the end of the array or something like this. What uh, you do here is you treat your array as uh, just a number. And NumPy or lots uh, plus operator and actually produces a result element wise. So that plus operator is doing here beneath the surface uh, is binary U function. And universal function combines loop and functionality. So what we've said here is uh, when we do A plus one is we tell NumPy I wanna loop through all uh, the elements of the array and I wanna add one to each of those elements. And we have the same thing uh, for multiplication and for other operators. And please note, uh, this is element-wise multiplication, not just matrix product. Uh, we'll have nice syntax for matrix product uh, in uh, Python 3.5, not now. And uh, well, notice the difference here. Uh, we, do, we don't have any loop here. So, uh, and uh, with NumPy, this loop actually taken place in uh, internals of NumPy. And uh, <clears throat> the question is, why do we care about this? So let's take a look at uh, the speed of UFUNX. Uh, first of all, we create a large array uh, with a lot of uh, values and uh, two percent in time at function means to time everything in the cell and we're gonna time creating an array and adding one to each element of the array. And for NumPy, uh, what we get is uh, 100 uh, microseconds per loop. And if we do the same in pure Python, uh, we do this by hand in Python, we create an array and then we loop through the length of the array and then we add a, a one for each element of the array. And again, we got uh, 100 factor speed up. 
Well, and also I should point out that uh, it's much more easier to type and uh, understand this code. It's hard to get it wrong than least comprehensions. And uh, you might ask uh, why Python, uh, why NumPy is so much faster. So what is the magic that uh, happens under the hood in, uh, well, here? And uh, what it comes down to is the fact uh, that when you use NumPy, you function, functions. Uh, the loops are happening in uh, compiled code. So NumPy is a big package uh, written in C, and you have uh, compiled functions for common operations. So the common operations, uh, um, so you, we actually access uh, these uh, common operations in Python using the high level expressions. And that's why uh, it's so much faster. Uh, well, does it uh, still make sense? Okay, well, it's, uh, well, it's really nice, uh, these U functions, and uh, there are many U functions uh, uh, that are built into NumPy, and basically all arithmetic operations, uh, comparison, uh, bitwise operations, uh, overloaded for NumPy arrays uh, to do these sort of universal functions, element-wise. And uh, there are a uh, bunch of uh, other uh, operators in um, <coughs> NumPy. Well, uh, the next thing uh, we're gonna talk about is uh, slicing and indexing. And if you used to lists uh, in Python, uh, you know that you can index a uh, list with an uh, integer uh, to find a single value, and you can also index a uh, list with uh, slice to get multiple values, and you can actually do absolutely the same uh, with the NumPy arrays. Well, and uh, one interesting thing about uh, NumPy slicing is uh, that there is no memory overhead, like uh, unlike uh, in plain Python lists, and NumPy returns just a view of the array, so if you assign this slice uh, to the new variable and you change uh, only one value in that new array, um, the, this value is changed in the initial array as well. So please be aware of this. Well, in multidimensional array, you can access elements by row, column, uh, row comma, column. So uh, indexes. Uh, uh, so if you pass uh, uh, 0, 1, and we are asking for row 0 and column 1, and that the value is 1. And we can also use slicing on multidimensional arrays. Uh, so in the last example here, we got a submatrix. And we can go further and combine slices and indexes together. And here we are asking for row number zero and for all columns, uh, which is uh, uh, exactly the same to write, well, uh, zero of uh, x of zero. Uh, so um, uh, NumPy actually offers a lot of other uh, fast and convenient ways to do all sorts of indexing, <coughs> to index more complicated uh, arrays, uh, to index more complicated chunks of data. And one of those are index arrays. Um, index arrays is just basically passing uh, a list of indexes to the array. So if you want uh, a second, zeroth, and first element of the array, we just put those indexes in a list and we pass that list to the array index and uh, came up with the values. And again, we don't have to write any loop here and uh, over these indexes, we just pass them all together at once. And it's much quicker to, uh, well, than writing a Python loop. Uh, but the weird thing about uh, this is uh, it doesn't return the view of the array as we've seen before. In most cases, it returns a copy of the array. So, uh, 
you have to be aware of this. Uh, you can see here that this assignment didn't change the value of the initial array x, unlike we saw it before. And NumPy allows you to use Boolean mask uh, as an indexing. So instead of passing an uh, integer to choose values from x, uh, you can pass this mask. And uh, it will construct uh, the array you are interested in. And so this might seem like, uh, well, why would I need a thing like this? And when it, when it becomes handy, uh, when you combine this uh, with the simple u functions we saw earlier, and uh, if you look at the last example uh, on the slide, uh, here we used uh, x is greater than two uh, to construct a Boolean array, uh, then we just pass uh, this uh, array to the array index uh, of x. Well, and I found myself uh, using this technique mostly on data preparation step. Uh, for instance, uh, when we are looking uh, on the array and uh, we want to split data into test and train sets, well, the nice ways to do this, uh, besides using uh, built-in SciPy uh, test train split, uh, is to create a mask uh, with the length of the array uh, and apply this mask uh, to the array and apply its uh, negative uh, version of it to the array. And that's how the same thing achieved by my students. So instead of writing uh, this uh, loop over the list and saying, uh, you know, f uh, for, uh, for item in the list, uh, if some condition appended it to the result, uh, uh, it happens automatically, and uh, it happens in one line of code. And it's much, much quicker than uh, this uh, Python by hand version. And uh, the next idea I want to talk about is using NumPy broadcasting. So this is something very cool about NumPy. And broadcasting is the one of these uh, things that uh, really makes NumPy powerful and uh, allows you to express uh, very complicated uh, operations very easily. And what broadcasting does, it gives you a set of rules uh, by which UFUNX operates on the uh, arrays of uh, different sizes and dimensions. So. Uh, what this set of rules uh, allows you to do is to do things like, for example, add an uh, integer to an array and, well, you can add a row to the matrix or you can do even crazier things. Uh, you can add a row to the column and it will expand to the two-dimensional matrix. So the rules of uh, broadcasting is pretty simple, uh, but it's sometimes a little bit confusing and it takes a while to wrap your mind around what's going on. And, but once you get this, uh, uh, you can uh, do a huge amount of operations uh, that uh, uh, really efficiently using these broadcasting rules. So the first rule is uh, if the array shapes differ, left path the smaller shape with the uh, ones. And then you compare the dimensions and if any dimension doesn't match, uh, you broadcast or kind of expand uh, the dimensions with the size equals to one. And if the dimensions don't match but neither of them is equal to one, there is no way to match those together and you raise an error. So this is a quick example of how it goes. Uh, we already saw adding a, a scalar to a vector. Example, when we spoke about uh, u functions, we didn't know back there that it was uh, broadcasting. And looking at this example, uh, we have two by three matrix and uh, we are adding length three vector. So the first thing we do here, we do uh, left path it with the ones to make the number of the dimensions match. And then we broadcast that uh, up and we stretch uh, that vector across the whole matrix. 
So then we have two matrices to match. And then we just add them together. And we got the result shape uh, two by three. And we can think about it like uh, copying memory across uh, array to match dimensions. But there is no actual, actually there is no copying memory. Uh, this is just an abstraction to think about it. So there is no memory overhead. And uh, NumPy is, uh, just acts like if this is happening under the hood. Um, uh, so what this, is, uh, this allows you to do is uh, uh, to do things like um, rather than writing your loops uh, uh, around uh, two arrays uh, and uh, in Python you can express uh, this with uh, uh, broadcasting syntax and uh, you get much faster version and much faster computations and also much cleaner code. So you don't have to worry about loops and uh, well I showed it uh, here for the addition but it works for any binary functions. And one more nice feature about uh, NumPy you might not uh, you might not uh, have seen before. Uh, we have a three by two matrix here and what will happen if we add this uh, uh, two together uh, according to broadcasting rules. Uh, uh, well, we got a value error because uh, uh, our shapes uh, are three by two and uh, three length array. So there is no, uh, there is no way to match those together. Uh, we can left pad uh, uh, array with uh, ones, but then we just can't expand this to match uh, the matrix shape. Uh, so uh, here comes uh, uh, NumPy new axis, and what it basically does, it uh, uh, takes the, uh, the array and adds a new axis here. And you can add a, a new axis where we want, and it's very useful when you want to reorient uh, your array somehow to broadcast it in a way you want it. So does it still make sense? Well, because uh, at my lecture in university, uh, most of my students were lost at this point. Okay, I see. Uh, once again, broadcasting uh, doesn't add additional memory. It doesn't actually allocate new array. So the last idea I want to talk uh, today is uh, NumPy aggregations. And uh, NumPy aggregations is a function uh, which summarizes uh, the values of the array somehow. And uh, as an example, I have a mean function. And uh, NumPy has a bunch of uh, aggregations are built in like minimum, maximum, sum, etc. And again, it's something uh, that if you are writing it out row, uh, you have to write a loop, a uh, Python loop. Uh, uh, so uh, you could loop over this array and do it yourself, but it's much faster to do this using built-in aggregations. And uh, one more nice thing about Pyth uh, NumPy aggregations uh, that uh, aggregations can do uh, uh, is to work on multidimensional arrays. So if you want to get the mean uh, value of the entire array, uh, you do x dot mean, and if you want the mean value of the uh, columns of the array, you pass the axis argument there. So you got uh, the uh, mean of uh, your columns. Uh, so there is a lot of aggregations available in NumPy and you should get familiar uh, with them if you're gonna do some large uh, scale data analysis. And the cool thing uh, about them is uh, all of them have the same call signature so you can pass access parameter to all of them. Well, so in a quick summary, writing Python is fast, uh, but uh, loops in particular are slow. And if you are looking over the large data set, the best, way, uh, the best way to do this is to use NumPy package. 
and uh, to try some of these uh, techniques. And the very last little thing I want to show you uh, is the example of how it's, uh, it can be used to implement a meaningful alg algorithm. So we will uh, use a k-means here, and I believe all of you know this algorithm, and uh, this is clustering one. So it's a quick reminder uh, how algorithm sounds. Uh, well, you select k points and random and cluster centers and uh, assign object to their closest cluster center according to Euclidean distance and then calculate the centroid uh, or the mean of all of the objects in each cluster. And then you repeat steps uh, two, three, and four. And uh, here we just uh, generate some thin synthetic uh, data to work with it. And uh, here it is. Uh, it's a visualization for this data and we have a bunch of points floating in the space and we want to compute uh, clusters for each point here. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to compute Euclidean distance and here we got a vectorized version of it. Oh, sorry, here it is. Uh, just five lines of code. And uh, here it is, it's uh, algorithm implemented uh, line by line like it was written before. And uh, so I took this uh, words uh, um, definition and uh, I just managed to translate it uh, line by line into Python. So it can be achieved uh, by uh, py uh, pure Python without uh, NumPy errors. But well, uh, this makes me really excited. And here it is. So uh, I believe we just uh, out of time and I'm gonna leave you with this. And if you are interested in these slides, uh, you can go to my Twitter account and I'll uh, post a link to slides there. And I wanna thank you for listening and I hope this was helpful. And please enjoy the lunch and the rest of conference. Well, thank you, Ekaterina. Um, now it's time for questions, if you have, if you have some. No questions, really? It's great. Okay. Um, uh, have you ever compared uh, NumPy performance with PyPy? For example, if any of your students refuses to use NumPy, but you still need to check the assignment, you can just uh, run yeah. it on PyPy to speed okay. up. Uh, well, um, PyPy and uh, Numba and uh, several, well, for instance, just in time uh, compilers are great ideas, but uh, it doesn't fit this. Uh, uh, talk, uh, uh, sometimes it's faster, sometimes uh, uh, NumPy beats uh, PyPy, so uh, there is uh, the, a lot of work uh, should be done. Thank you. More questions? Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, is it easy to write a custom uh, uh, universal function? Uh, it's uh, perfectly easy. Uh, well, uh, I like uh, NumPy because uh, you can write a universal function yourself and then just uh, uh, it'll work uh, like a built-in one. Okay, thank you, Katarina, for coming.